Good afternoon. Welcome to my presentation on IoT authentication. In this presentation, I will talk about my paper entitled Design and Implementation of a Lightweight Authentication Framework for the Internet of Things. In this presentation, I will give an overview of the work I have done in this paper but before I begin, I will briefly talk about the background related to this topic. So, first of all, quickly on the background that many of you know the story behind the Internet of Things. The term Internet of Things was first coined by Kevin Ashton in 1999 and it has become one of the most and recent emerging and advanced computing paradigms in the 21st century. IoT devices are often resource constrained and deployed in an uncontrolled and insecure environment. Authentication represents the main gate to protect IoT devices and networks from previous security threats. Of course, determining who the entity is is of high importance to establish a secure session between IoT devices. Unfortunately, authentication breaches represent a significant part of IoT security threats. During the literature review, we have identified the research gaps as only a few existing approaches on using lightweight cryptography functions, namely hash function and bitwise XOR for IoT authentication. Most existing approaches do not consider strong mutual authentication for IoT devices. Most previous works provide only partial coverage of the crucial security property or suffer from unsatisfactory performance. Attackers can still trace transactions linked to the same identity of IoT devices, thus leading to privacy breaches. And based on that, we have defined our research objectives as to develop new lightweight protocols and mechanisms to authenticate IoT devices in a secure way. To maximize that security for IoT devices by covering the key security properties such as anonymity and traceability and linkability, and to ensure and support high assurance in the identity of IoT devices and to reduce the external and insider threats related to IoT authentication. The main and tangible contributions of the paper is a new lightweight and anonymous mutual authentication and key exchange protocol based on dynamic identity and temporarily session keys that is changed in every session. So as you see in figure one, our framework consists of three main participants, namely IoT node, the controller node, and manufacturer POG node. In the beginning of the authentication process, the controller node is not aware of the real identity of IoT node. And there is a pre-trust relationship exists between each IoT node and the manufacturer, which will contribute in facilitating the IoT node membership validation between the controller and the manufacturer POG node later on during the authentication process, as we are going to see later in this presentation. We also use a dynamic identity and a temporal secret keys that change in every session. And the reason why? Because we want to achieve and ensure, the, uh, ensure achieving the key security properties such as anonymity and traceability and linkability for word backward security. As you see in this figure, we introduced a new mechanism called cumulative key hash chain, where each IoT node and the controller maintain a synchronized database 
with the cumulative hashes generated from the previous sessions. So when the IoT devices start the authentication process with the controller, it will first com it will compute HF by hashing the concatenation of the intended message parameters and the session key and the last updated cumulative hash value. And then it will insert the HF in the intended message to be sent to the controller. And then the IoT device will co 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 compute or calculate a new hash value called cumulative hash value by hashing the HF with the session key. And then it will insert the cumulative hash value as a new value in the cumulative hash table. The controller in the other side will do the same steps and will compare the computed HF with the received HF. If they match, that means the IoT device is legitimate and the controller will continue authenticating the IoT device. Otherwise, the controller will drop the message. Here we will explain the authentication phases where we have three different phases. Initialization phase where the manufacturer park node initializes each IoT device with a unique identity that should be secured between the three participants. And the system administrator initializes the controller with a secret key called KCRM. The second phase is the registration phase done by the system administrator, where the system administrator uses the master key KCRM and the real identity of each IoT devices to compute three different authentication parameters called C1, S1, S2, S3 based on only XOR and hash function and will store these three different parameters in the memory of the IoT device. So in the third phase, which is the authentication and key ex exchange phase, the IoT device will rely on these three different authentication parameters, S1, S2, S3, and based only on XOR and hash function, it will compute some secure parameter, such as the dynamic identity, the session key, and it will and it will hide them using S1 and S2 and S3, and it will send them in plain text to the controller. So, and then the controller will try, and only in the first message has to contact the manufacturer to do the as I said before, the IoT membership validation. And then once the controller receives the real identity of the that IoT device, it will store it in its memory and it will continue the authentication with the IoT device. So after the completion of writing the authentication phases, we implement our work using the Omnet++. And we also uh, test our uh, framework under different scen uh, attack scenarios. And then we evaluated the overhead and efficiency of our framework in terms of storage and communication and computation cost. As you see in table one, in terms of storage cost, our framework is required to store only 1,024 bits, while the controller is required to store 480 bits plus 80 bits multiplied by the number of registered IoT devices. In Table 3, we show a comparison between our framework and the other related work in terms of the communication cost and we use the number of messages and the number of total bits of the transmission between the controller and each IoT device as a key for our comparison. 
And as you see here, we only have two messages and total number of 1,376 bits, while the other related work have a higher number than our communication cost. And in this slide, we graphically represent the previous comparisons in terms of the number of exchange messages for a successful mutual authentication and total or in, the, in terms of the total number of bits and it's obvious that our framework outperformed the other related works we also compare our framework with other related work in terms of the computational cost and our framework only use hash functions and bit XO. And as you see in this table, our framework required only 0 0.023 uh, millisecond in terms of computational cost, while the other related work require a higher number than ours, except the work done by Riza Lat, which just required just a little bit, like a little lower computational cost approximately 0 0.0023 millisecond and that's because our framework adds and provides additional security features and mechanisms such as anonymity and linkability and traceability for world and backward security cumulative hashed value so our framework, in general, outperformed the other related work. So if we consider the additional security, the additional lightweight security, so it can be said that our framework provided a more efficient performance than the other related work. To sum up, we have designed a lightweight authentication framework for the Internet of Things and our framework is in general more efficient than recently proposed protocols. Our protocol was implemented use, using Omnet++ and tested under different attack scenarios. For future work, we will try to extend the protocol to, ext to consider cases where an IoT node leaves one home network and joins another network. We will allow IoT devices in different homes to communicate regardless to the underlying communication protocol. We will sort impersonation by adapting continuous authentication schemes. We will try to address the impact of key constraints of the proposed schemes. Thank you for your attention and listening. And if you have any question, please don't hesitate to email me on my email malshahr at yopec.ke. And thank you.